Please do not touch. Single, Single trophy. trophy. Yeah. Double trophy. Do we have to put it? Nah, fuck it. <laughs> put it wherever you like. <laughs> oh, crunchy. Ready to go? We are ready to go. Cool, okay. Well, Rinky and Jason, congratulations. An absolutely amazing match. Just uh, firstly, talk us through it. And I mean, at the beginning of the tournament, did you let yourselves think that this could be a real possibility? <laughs> no, I mean, no, not in the slightest. Um, I think we were just happy to be in the draw, to be honest. And then. You know, we looked at our draw and we're like, geez, if we could win one match or so, that'd be a pretty good effort. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't even know. It's been, it's been a ridiculous two weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't really put it into words. Uh, but yeah, it's been an absolute blast. I can't really, uh, I can't really just, yeah, I, don't, I can't believe that that just happened. Jason? Yeah, no, no, same as... Same as Rinky. Um, I think right now it actually hasn't sunk in what, what we've done, what we've accomplished. Um, like it probably still feels like we have another match in a, in a couple of days or something like that. But you know, I think after you know we wake up tomorrow and I, I real I think we'll we'll really realise what we've just done. You know, like I saw a a photo after our semi and it said we'd only won eight or nine matches on the ATP tour before, and then now that we've got a Grand Slam title. And then mate, it's even just to say that, you know, like I didn't know for, for me, you know, if, if that was ever going to come true, you know, and then for Rinky to be 21 and to have a, a Grand Slam under his belt already, um, it's pretty exciting. So I think, yeah, tonight we'll, we'll definitely enjoy it. And then, you know, I think tomorrow when, when Rinky's going to his next tournament, and I'm probably going home, we'll, we'll really, uh, we'll really sink in and, and we'll realise what we've done. Questions in the room, thanks. Congratulations. What an unbelievable win and, and fortnight. But the match point, it was crazy. Talk us through your feelings immediately when, when that ball went out. Because, Rinky, I think you were on your backside at one point. So talk yeah. us through um, just the immediate emotions. Um, I mean, I had no clue what was going on. Coobs has, like, swatted two balls back. <laughs> and then I've just absolutely stacked it. Um, to be honest, I'm a bit a bit dirty. That that's my match yeah. point. But, uh, like, winning a slam on that because... Uh, yeah, I do look pretty unco there. I just, I think I just watched it then, and it's pretty bad. I don't know what I did, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess just super lucky there, to be honest. It was, uh, yeah, all luck. I didn't really know much about that one, and then Coobs did well to get those two balls back because I'm pretty sure I gave uh, Hugo a high volley, and Coobs did unreal to fight that one off. And uh, yeah, I, I don't even know. Hey. <laughs> been through some tough times with the six operations on your knee. At the lowest time of your fortunes, did you ever dream or imagine or visualise a night like tonight as a sort of way of motivating you to come through? Yeah, I think even lowest, highest, whichever day, I never thought in doubles it was gonna, this was going to happen, you know. I always, always dreamt of the, the singles one and that's sort of what, you know, Motivated. It's coming for Coops. <laughs> <laughs> That's what motivated me through those you know, tough times that you know, I want to win these trophies. But I also really enjoy playing, you know. But, yeah, look, I never, I was never really thinking about the the doubles trophy. I couldn't, I can't get into a lot of the, the tournaments because I don't have a high enough ranking, you know. So it's uh, it's pretty crazy now what, what me and Rinky can do for the rest of the year. Um, you know, I think we can play almost, if not all, the tournaments together. Um, and hopefully build off this, but man, this is, you know, highlight of the career for me, honestly. Like, and, and still, it, it hasn't, it hasn't one hundred percent sunk in yet. Like, it just feels, I don't know, almost surreal a little bit. But yeah, highlight of the career by far. Congratulations! Um, you clearly love the support you got here all week. Um, like, how much did did that energy help you to just keep overcoming these quality doubles of bonus? Oh, massive. I mean, I honestly think we probably would have lost first or second round had we not, like, you know, had the support we did. Um, we got through, I think, very close matches, the first three matches. Yeah. Um, you know, we are getting chopped in the second one. And the third one, I think we are down a set and 4-2, maybe down match point also. And, 
you know, just having that kind of so many people behind you is, is it's hard not to get up for it and it's hard not to kind of back yourself in the moment and really enjoy it because, you know, this is what you play for. Being able to play a home slam, there's nothing better. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm. it's been, yeah, just crazy and it's so much fun and I'm hoping that, you know, this is just the first of many Aussie Opens in front of support like that. Bloody destroyed by mosquito down here. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Sorry, sorry. It's tough. Um, you guys mentioned about you know going and playing some of the other major events this year, including all the four Grand Slams. But what does a win in terms of the prize money do to bankroll your seasons? Because obviously it's not easy and it's very, uh, very expensive. So talk us through how much uh, winning a Grand Slam actually helps in that sense. Um, for me, it makes a, a massive difference. Like ob obviously. You know, winning Grand Slams, singles especially, but doubles also is, is a, you know, I would almost say to an extent a career changing thing, you know. Uh, I feel after this almost, I can really almost choose who I want to come and, and, and when I want them to come, um, which is pretty cool. You know, I, I'm working with a, a coach, Jared Bunt, on, on the Gold Coast, and I feel. Well, at least this year, anyways, it's not really a, a money decision. It'll be when when I really want him to come over. So that that gives us great flexibility with our schedules, great peace of mind. You know, it's not uh, we're not worrying about making ends meet. Um, if we're you know, even if we're homesick a little bit, we can bring our family over or we can bring whoever over. So now it's uh, yeah, it makes it a lot more easy, a lot more comfortable for us. Next, I guess, Jason C is going home. But where are you? Where are you playing next? I'm uh, I'm flying to Bernie in about 12 hours, and I'm playing the Challenger there. And I think I've got to play Tuesday. So, yeah, I mean, I'll enjoy this tonight and probably tomorrow, and try soak it all in. But uh, yeah, I'm headed to Bernie. <laughs> you play the qualifier, so that's yeah. your first opponent. Um, yeah. So Tuesday start, I guess, which is, um, yeah, which is, I'm lucky. I definitely didn't want to play Monday. <laughs> You take us back to when you approached Jason and what the thought process was. Was was it spontaneous? You thought we'd just have a crack at doubles. What was? How did all that happen? Yeah, I mean, obviously Coops was kind of lighting it up last year, and he did very, very well. And even in dubs, he did very well. And made two ATP finals, and uh, yeah. So I thought. Honestly, if I signed in with him, he'd, we'd be a good chance at getting into the tournament, first of all. Like, getting a wild card, I guess that was one of the kind of factors was, uh, you know, I felt if, if we signed in together, I was hoping we'd be a good shot to get in. And then, obviously, he's an unreal player. So I'm hoping he could kind of carry me through a couple, <laughs> one or two matches, and he ended up carrying me through oh, six. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean... I guess I picked my partner as well this week. <laughs> Last couple. Well, uh, yeah, I just want to ask about playing in college. Obviously, you do have to play a lot of doubles there. How much does that help your game in terms of, you know, sort of adapting your skills between the singles court and the doubles court? Because some of the, you know, some of the ways that you hit returns tonight out wide and w were exemplary. So talk us through that. Yeah, I think it's massive. I think, you know, doubles is such a massive part of college tennis and, you do do a lot of the kind of work around the doubles game and, and especially at North Carolina, you know, we had great coaches, Coach Paul and Tripp, who, who made the semifinals of the US Open doubles. So to have someone like that and be able to learn from them is, I think, like, yeah, you know, second to none. And and then obviously I have Sharky now, who is a Sir Volier himself and, and is kind of able to maybe implement a little bit of that into my game um, or a bit of dubs kind of tactics and whatnot. And uh, yeah, you know, when I was at UNC, I was playing three dubs. Um, I was barely getting a run because we had that many good doubles players. Um, so I'm guessing, you know, if, if any of them tried to come and play on the tour, they'd absolutely light it up because, you know, I was probably one of the worst doubles players on the team, to be honest. And, and uh, yeah, so when you're competing with guys like that week in, week out, it, it's tough not to get better. Last one, Chris. <coughs> Have you um, divided responsibilities between you? I, mean, I know you joke with a bit of false modesty that Jason carried you, Rinky, but, I mean, it seemed to me that you, Rinky, were the energetic one and you were the more 
sort of grounded one, Jason. It, is that just how it evolved, or have you discussed roles as a team? Um, no, there's definitely no no roles. I think the the great thing about us is when we get out there, you know, most of the time it's, it's rinky fires us up. Um, and then almost sort of lifts me up a little bit because honestly, I believe the more energy Rinky has, the the better he plays. That was that was sort of the reason I was trying to get the crowd pumped before the the match point. You know, I thought, you know, this guy this guy loves the big moment. Um, you know, every time we go out on those big courts, it's it's more excitement from from Rinky. So even if I'm I'm a little bit nervous, Rinky sort of either pumps me up or calms me down because I know he's he's out there enjoying it as much as much as he can, but. Yeah, no, we, I think we, well, I don't know if we intentionally try, but we definitely don't talk about roles or leaders or anything like that. Um, we almost just go out there and, and try and have fun and try, try and enjoy it. Cause I think that's the, that's the way we play our best tennis is by sort of not, not thinking too much and just sort of playing off, off feel and, and instinct, so. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, thank you.